the mic, eh? Okay. Yes, I just, uh, just unmuted it. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, welcome, everybody. Um, my talk, as uh, Patrick said already, is about uh, deploying Ceph classes with salt. Um, I will uh, start off with covering a few basics. Um, we'll see if we actually need that. Um, then I will uh, try to run you through a deployment process, um, which I've done on a, on a virtual machine cluster. And in the end, I'll, I'll go into some more detail about some features of, uh, of the project, how you can customize it, and so on. Um, but yeah, we'll see how much time we have. All right, um, so to start us off, who doesn't know SALT here? Okay, a few people. And who doesn't know Ceph yet? Just one, two, okay. We'll go through it then. So uh, SALT is a um, configuration management software and remote execution engine. Um, it's similar to other projects like Ansible, um, Puppet, Chef. It does a few things different than others, but whatever. Um, it's based on Python, um, Python's templating engine, and 0MQ. And uh, the underlying principle is a master applying state to minions, so it's uh, push-based. And these states you can define in uh, a bunch of files that sit in a directory hierarchy. And um, you can, in these files, you can um, define a, a directed acyclic graph across several minions. This is uh, one of the things that is fairly unique. I think Puppet does that too, but that's uh, one of the features of SALT. Um, yeah, the mission statement of SALT you can read for yourself, or you can just look it up on the GitHub page. Um, Ceph, we, we heard quite a bit about Ceph today already. Um, it's a um, scalable, fault-tolerant, and self-healing um, storage system that provides you with block storage, object storage, and file storage. And um, it's mainly designed to run on commodity hardware. Um, yeah, this should suffice for now. Um, OK, so we want to deploy Ceph using salt. And um, the project for that is called DeepSea. Um, it's basically a collection of uh, salt files, salt state files mainly. Um, and they should aid in the uh, creation of Ceph clusters and in the management as too. Uh, it has several, or in it, by its inception, it had several goals in mind. So it, doesn't, it won't deal with any uh, bare metal deployment. So you should, you should do that before. It won't install an OS or anything. And it won't bootstrap itself. So you need a running salt cluster. Um, that's yeah, basically ins installing salt, starting the processes, and accepting a few keys. You can look that up on the salt website. That um, is fairly easy to do. Anyway, Deep Sea starts after you have a running salt cluster. Um, another aim was to automate um, hardware detection. So uh, when you want to deploy a sizable Ceph cluster, you have to deal with quite a lot of hardware on different machines, and we try to avoid you having to deal with that. So we want to automate a lot of that. Um, Deep Sea tries to spot problems before they get deployed. So uh, we have a bunch of validation steps uh, that we want to run and warn you that you shouldn't do this. And uh, yeah, it's not just deployment. It's also managing the whole life cycle, ideally. Um, there is some work to do still, but um, yeah, we'll, we'll get there. Uh, it's obviously uh, open source licensed under the GPL. And the current status is we are at version 0.71 or 2. I'm not quite sure at the moment. Um, it's usable, so the whole deployment uh, workflow works. And basic management capabilities are there, too. So you can um, decommission nodes and add new nodes and that kind of stuff. And yeah, uh, you can read more about it. You can report bugs. You can contribute uh, on GitHub. Feel free anytime. There is uh, a wiki, too, and obviously the bug tracker and all that. So um, just go there for now. It might, at some point, as I just talked to Patrick, it might, at some point, uh, migrate to the uh, Ceph, com um, what's it called, the Ceph project. Um, but we'll, we'll obviously inform you of that. OK, so um, basic workflow for Deep Sea. Um, as I said, you install your OS on, on all your minion, on all your nodes that you want to use. 
You install salt, you get your salt cluster up, and you install the deep C package on your master. Um, and then you start using deep C, obviously. <laughs> it's uh, organized in, in a bunch of stages. Um, to get a running Ceph cluster, you need to run at least three stages. This is one through uh, three here, one, two, three. Um, stage zero is kind of optional. You don't really have to do it. Um, it would take care of all your minions being in the same state. So, you know, run some updates, install a certain kernel version or whatever. Um, we do have some files for that. They probably won't work for everyone. So that's why it's optional. Uh, discovery will check out all your hardware. Um, then there's a manual step. You have to create uh, one configuration file that pulls in all um, those proposed configuration fragments. And what that means, we'll, we'll get to that in a second. Um, yeah, this is the one manual step you have to do. After that, you uh, so, uh, Deep C will create your configuration out of that, pu push it out to all the minions, and then stage three will actually deploy Ceph. In stage three, uh, you will deploy monitors and OSDs, so you will get a fully functional Ceph cluster. And um, stage four will then deploy some extra uh, services, mostly, um, you know, CephFS, RGW, iSCSI, and all that sort of thing. Uh, there's also stage five, which will then deal with removal, but this is more related to uh, lifecycle management of a Ceph cluster. And um, in this, um, in the next part where we'll go into, into a deployment process, we'll only look at stages uh, one, two, and three because you know, of co time constraints mostly. Um, especially stage four can get quite complex. If you, you know, look at iSCSI deployment or RGW, you, know, you can have um, multiple gateways uh, that, that interact with, with each other and um, the whole configuration just can become quite complex. So there's not, not enough time here to cover all that. Um, some more notes about DeepC itself. Um, the stages are um, orchestration files uh, for you that know um, SALT. That means they are um, executed with the uh, orchestration runner. Uh, and these orchestration files will take care of, of all the minion targeting that, that needs to be done. Um, it's based on roles. So we, we put roles on uh, nodes and uh, SALT will act on those uh, nodes depending on their roles. Uh, but you can also uh, execute these states um, manually, but then you have to target them yourself. Um, a common pattern that you will see within DeepC is um, this redirection pattern. So um, SALT, when you, when you um, want to apply state to a minion, um, you can point SALT at a directory and by default it will uh, look into this directory and execute the init.sls. This is just a convention of salt. Um, we have all our init.sls init uh, have this include in it. They include a file in the local directory according to some configuration data that is stored in the pillar. For those of you who don't know what a pillar is, that's uh, just a, a place where you can um, store static configuration data that is available to all minions. It's kind of Think of it as a key value store. Um, so this includes here, the specific one will uh, look into look in the pillar if there's anything defined for mon in it. If there is, it will use that as a value, or if not, it will just use default, which in this case will then open a default.sls in the same directory and execute what's in there. And um, why we do this, I will get to that, I will get back to that at a later stage. Uh, also, DeepC requires a minion on your master node because we do want to apply some state to your master. Um, I, we heard some people saying that this is kind of a deal breaker. We haven't really understood yet why. Um, but yeah, this, uh, I just wanted to mention it. All right. Um, yeah, so let's try it. I'm not going to do a live demo. <laughs> uh, I, I, you know, I'm holding it like uh, Lens did earlier. I, I don't trust the demo gods. Uh, I have a bunch of uh, screenshots of the deployment process. 
Uh, I hope you, it's not too confusing with all the different files that are involved. That's not too important. What, what I mostly want you to take away is that, um, that you can customize certain, uh, certain things. Uh, certain things are taken out, not out of your hands, but are done for you. That's the important part. And um, yeah, I hope that works. So don't, don't get disheartened when you get lost in you know, what file is open now or whatever. Okay, so I have this uh, demo cluster, uh, 10 virtual machines, fairly small machines. Uh, they have two network interfaces each because that's what Ceph likes. Ceph likes a cluster, in, a cluster network and a public network. Um, there are six OSD nodes all in all. Uh, four of them have, no, actually all of them have five, five gigabyte drives. You know, if such a thing would even exist. And uh, two OSDs have an extra one gigabyte drive. So we have 32 drives overall, means we can at most deploy 32 OSDs. Uh, they're fairly conveniently named, as you can see. So we have MON123 and data one through six. Um, that's, I just chose it that way because it, it'll be easier for the presentation. Um, those names will be used in the policy.cfg, um, but I'll, I'll uh, explain a few things if your naming scheme isn't quite that convenient. Um, yeah, as you can see, there's nine nodes that I'm going to use for this cluster. The admin node is basically just my salt master. <laughs> All right. Um, so stage zero, I've, I've talked about this before. Um, it's optional. It's at the moment very SUSE specific. Uh, we're working on getting rid of that, but there are some uh, issues in salt that need solving first. It doesn't do any black magic or anything, so you know it, it syncs your salt states. It uh, installs a package or two, runs some updates. Um, you can do that with salt itself, uh, fitting for your um, distribution, and then you can just step, uh, skip stage zero. So um, that's yeah, highly optional. Uh, at the moment, stage zero in DeepC might reboot your minions, and that includes the minion your master runs on. So be advised if you do use stage zero and you manage other nodes, you know, maybe with reactors, um, maybe step away from running stage zero. It might <laughs> surprise you. Okay, so stage one is the first um, interesting one for us. Uh, it does discovery. So it goes out uh, to all your minions and uh, queries them for their hardware, which for Ceph, of course, is network hardware and storage hardware. Um, it will then uh, write a whole bunch of configuration fragments in uh, the pillar subdirectory, which you can, oh, there's a typo there. It should be SRV pillar set proposals. Um, those configuration fragments, we'll look, we'll look at some in a second, are really just tiny, um, tiny YAML files, which will then make up your configuration. Um, what's important to note here is it will produce a, roughly at least, per fragment and minion, it will produce one file. So um, it will produce all the necessary fragments uh, for all your minions to be a monitor. You don't, you don't want that probably. I don't want nine monitor nodes here, obviously, um, but it will give you the option to that. It will also produce all these uh, configuration fragments for all the salt minions that might not you know, become Ceph nodes in the end. This, um, you can see that this will, there are a lot of files that are uh, created, but uh, luckily you never have to really look at them. So um, yeah, just met, wanted to mention that. Uh, this proposals directory will look like that after you run stage zero. Um, so yeah, it's a bunch of subdirectories, a whole bunch of uh, role definements. So as you can see, you know, role mon will be one important one, obviously, that we're going to use. Um, above the roles, there are the profiles. Those will be um, the storage nodes. So for every hard drive uh, deep sea encounters, it will try to propose a storage layout for that particular node and uh, create a directory that's kind of named after what hardware it found. As you can see here, this resembles roughly my OSD nodes. And above that, there's just some uh, general configuration data. So yeah, what, what's actually in those files? Um, oh, by the way, I hope everybody can see that. I was kind of 
looks all right, hey? Okay. Um, yeah. So the top one is uh, the configuration fragments for one node um, that is going to become a monitor, and as you can see, it's they're really tiny fragments. So there is um, a role key, and this particular fragment will add mon to that uh, to that list. And since the monitors of Ceph have to be on the public network, they'll get an IP address too. And that's it already. Um, the storage profiles, they, they're a bit bigger. So we again have this, um, this role um, array. And in this case, you add storage, obviously. But you also now have the actual storage profile. So in this case, this is one of the minions that had uh, five drives in it. And this particular proposal that DeepSea came up with uh, will deploy five OSDs, standalone OSDs, all on their own disk. Um, there's usually two ways you can deploy an OSD in Ceph that's uh, standalone on its own disk, but you can also put the journal on an external disk. So you, the OSD will use two separate disks. You usually want to do this when you have an SSD and uh, spinners, for example then you would put the journal on the SSD and the actual data on the uh, spinners to speed up the write and read process. Uh, that's the other line up there, data plus journals. That would be the other way of deploying um, an OSD and we'll again get back to that later. Okay, so you have um, all your proposals now. Now it's time to come up with the policy.cfg. So as I said, this is the central configuration file. Um, Basically, what you do is you uh, include a whole bunch of these configuration fragments, and uh, DeepC will then, in another stage, collect, or, you know, compile all those configuration fragments and uh, create a config out of it. Um, we only have nine nodes here now, so it's not too unwieldy. But you know, imagine you have a hundred nodes, and your storage nodes have like. 24 drives in it or so, um, you get a lot of fragments. So you obviously don't want to list every, every single file. So, and then the policy.cfg, you can use um, the globs that SALT uses too. Um, I'll show you in a second what I mean. But you can also do more complex stuff with uh, list slicing and regexes. And yeah, the order in which you list things is important because um, later options will overwrite another incarnation of themselves. Um, <laughs> but that's not too important for us now either. So the policy.cfg that I used for this uh, cluster here looks like that. Um, yeah, it's maybe not, maybe not too uh, obvious what, what happens here, so let's, let's step through it. Um, this is a configuration fragment here uh, that will just assign minions to a cluster. Um, Eventually, DeepC should be able to uh, manage multiple clusters, multiple Ceph clusters. For now, this is only used if you um, want to deploy a Ceph cluster, but also have other nodes that you manage in SALT. Then those nodes, uh, you would actually include a cluster-unassigned uh, file, and then they wouldn't be uh, managed by DeepC anymore. But since we don't have that, we just you know, um, include the cluster assignments. Next step is uh, the hardware profiles. So um, here I just include all, uh, all suggested profiles because uh, I have a limited amount of disks only. There's nothing I don't want to use. And DeepC only came up with one suggestion. Uh, that's, you know, you can see profile dash some disk dash some other disk. And then there's a dash one at the end of every, um, of every directory. Usually, DeepC would come up with at least another, um, with another proposal, which would then be named dash two. But that only happens if it finds an SSD. So if it you know, is able to create this uh, external journal OSD, which doesn't happen on virtual disks, obviously. Um, then you include some common configuration. This mostly deals with um, Ceph configuration values that you want to deploy. And then you assign some more roles, um, mainly here the master, which is my salt master. Um, all, the, all the nodes that are called mon something should become admin nodes, so they get an admin key ring. And all the nodes that are called mon something will become monitors, obviously. Um, you can see how my, how my naming scheme uh, here is very convenient. <laughs> um, 
you might, as I said, you, you know, you might have some nodes already. They might not be as conveniently named. So uh, there are some other options to use these globs. Um, you can use other salt globs, so you can, you know, list uh, certain allowed values. Um, but much more interesting is you can use, uh, you can give another argument to it. So this um, admin star will create a list of all the nodes that are called admin something. And then you can pass along either a slice, which will take a chunk out of this uh, list, or a regex, which will match every item of this list against this regex. Or you can u even use both if you wanted to. So this should take care of even the most, you know, un unlucky naming schemes for hosts uh, for a Ceph deployment. Um, and avoid, you know, you having to list all the files that are there. Okay, so we have our policy.cfg. Um, we run stage two now. This will take all those fragments and produce a, a configuration for DeepC to use. Uh, this is based on stack.py. Um, DeepC comes with stack.py, but if you use um, a fairly new salt version, uh, this will include stack.py too. So uh, you, there's nothing to do really. Um, it will write out this configuration to a directory tree under SRV pillar Ceph stack default. This is um, the configuration you basically came up with in your policy.cfg. It will create the same subdirectory tree uh, in its parent directory and create all the files that are in the default tree too. These files in the parent directory are for you to use, so you can override certain options that uh, DeepC came up with and that you don't like. Um, that's, yeah, just a, a customization thing. It's, yeah, you just have to look at it. It's fairly obvious. Um, and you can check your config uh, with, by just looking into the pillar. So you target a minion and uh, do pillar.items and it will list all those configuration key value pairs that you have and you can just check up that, that everything's as you want it. And then you're mostly done. You run stage three, which will take care of the whole deployment, and you have a running Ceph cluster. Um, one thing to mention about stage three is that it will validate the uh, configuration you want to use. So it will run quite a few steps of, uh, you know, looking that you have three mons, for example, that you have enough storage nodes, um, that, you know, maybe you have a firewall running on some of the nodes, it will notify you at least of that. So when stage, uh, stage three is uh, through and some things don't work, you know, it might be a firewall issue or so. Um, yeah, and then go out, install Ceph, create the cluster, uh, and create a pool. Um, this is what it looks like. You don't have to try to decipher that. What what you should take away is that it's nice and green, so we're all good. And then we have a running Ceph cluster. Um, this is, yeah, the health worn here, don't worry about that. That's just the pool that, I, that it automatically creates is too small. Um, what I want you to pay attention to is that we have 32 OSDs, so on each <coughs> virtual drive that um, uh, machines have, there is one OSD. Yeah, and that's it basically. Um, so, <laughs> can finish now? No. Um, let's look at how you can customize this whole process. Oh, is, are there any questions so far, maybe? I don't know, is uh, anybody very disheartened or very confused, probably? Uh, probably too confused to have questions. Okay, let's confuse you a little more. Um, I've spoken about the uh, hardware profiles. So as I said, DeepC will usually come up with another profile for external journals, but only if you have an SSD, which is obviously not the case in my uh, virtual machine cluster here. So I just wrote one. Uh, what, Ceph, uh, what DeepC will um, uh, propose will look very similar to that. So it's just a, a key value mapping of a data drive uh, pointing towards a journal drive that you want to use. Um, on a real cluster, this would look more like that. Um, this, you know, we want to use the actual ID of the drive because the, the def slash SD something might change. Um, you get an idea why, why it's good that DeepSea 
automatically creates all those files because, I mean, this is even a small one, right? This has like, what, seven or eight drives? Uh, imagine that with 24 drives, it gets a little uh, error prone, let's say. Um, so yeah, so, but I want to use this profile now. I want to use, I want to create SSDs that uh, have their journal partition on an X, on another drive than their data partition. Um, so we are back at, imagine we're back at stage, after stage one, obviously. So we haven't uh, created our uh, policy.cfg. Um, yeah. Another thing we have to look at now is uh, how to customize the behavior of DeepC. Because um, mostly for this particular uh, case, uh, Ceph disk, which will, which will we, will we be using to uh, deploy the OSD will just refuse to uh, deploy an OSD on a one gigabyte drive. Um, reasonably so, but we want to force it to do that. So I wrote um, a custom SLS file, which I called fostem.sls, and put it in the um, OSD subdirectory of the salt tree. I won't bore you with what's actually in it. Uh, it'll just partition the drives the size you want to and then force Ceph disk to actually use those partitions. Okay, so um, how do we get DeepC to use it now? Um, I spoke before already about this redirection pattern. So um, I, it's up here again. Um, oh yeah, and you might notice on this slide here, the, the, there is an init dot sls and a default dot sls those are the files that deep C come with comes with um, yeah and i just added something there so now we have to uh, put a key value pair in the pillar which defines osd in it to fostem so deep C will use my fostem dot sls and this you can do in the uh, in the um, stack directory where the configuration lives after stage two. Uh, I've spoken before about those two um, um, mirroring subdirectory trees. Uh, and I look here into the global.yaml. You will see, so this file was initially empty and it gives you a little comment uh, to you know, notify you that it will override values in the uh, default slash global.yaml. And basically, I just put those two key value pairs in. Uh, mostly the OSD in it, obviously, is here interesting. Um, for the partitioning, I've done the same thing because I, I also created a default partitioning, a uh, custom partitioning uh, scheme. Uh, yeah, and then this is in the pillar. So when you then run stage three, it will use your customizations, uh, go out and deploy a Ceph cluster. And we have now one with uh, 30 OSDs because two, the two one gigabyte disks uh, went into other OSDs. Yeah, this is uh, just a general workflow. Um, some more things that we can look at is beyond deployment. So uh, I talked about stage four already. Um, this deals with all additional services that, that Ceph offers, um, CephFS and so MDSs and uh, CephFS deployment obviously iSCSI, um, Rados Gateway. We, I think we already merged NS NFS Ganesha, or maybe not, but we're working on it, so it's, it's gonna be there too. And there's some uh, facilities for managing certain clients too. Um, yeah, this is a whole nother uh, presentation in itself, obviously. So, um, yeah, but it works the same way. It works, it's governed by a policy.cfg and uh, by this orchestration file, that, which you could customize if you wanted to. Um, stage five will deal with uh, removal of components. So say you want to decommission one of your OSD nodes. Um, the workflow here would be to um, change your policy.cfg to not include this particular minion anymore um, and run stage two to push out the configuration and then run stage five. This will remove the OSD. Uh, you can always run stage three and four too because uh, everything you do in salt is uh, idempotent, so it, it won't change anything if there's nothing to change. 
Uh, the idea here is that when you decommission an OSD, you, you, you might want to you know, deploy a new OSD with new hardware. So if you do that in one step, you obviously want to run stage uh, three and four. Uh, before you take, so you want to deploy a new node before you take out an old one. And yeah, this is it. Uh, we work on some other. Right, okay, so question was, what about a, a single OSD on an OSD node? And this is right now not possible. We are working on that though. Um, I mean, if the hard drive is broken, you can obviously, uh, you know, the OSD is out already. You can just pull it and put in a new one, restart the service. Um, but yeah, we're working on decommissioning single OSDs too, yes. Um, and that concludes my talk, so. <laughs> Any more questions? <laughs> Sorry. Sorry, what? Salt SSH? Yes. Um, I haven't tried that, but I don't see why it wouldn't work. Because, I mean, the, the transport, oh, so the question was if this can be used through salt SSH. And uh, I don't think there's anything you have to undo uh, to, to do that, right? I mean, it's a salt configuration uh, method. So I, I would you know, cautiously say it should work. <laughs> and another question? Uh, when setting up the uh, OSDs on the node, does the uh, stack um, uh, also include the root uh, drive? The OSD? No. So the question was if uh, the, the OSD deployment or proposal process will include the OS drive. And no, of course it won't. Uh, it will, in fact, ignore any formatted drive that you have in your OSD nodes. Any more questions? Right. Well, I mean, uh, no. <laughs> so for two reasons. Uh, so changing a RADOS pool, you can you can only increase the PG count, um, and your salt master has also the admin key. So there, you know, the RADOS command is already kind of a cluster management thing. So we we forewent that. Okay. Looks like no more questions, then thank you and have a good day.